Welcome back to Sail Hub. Today we're talking about this. This is an Impella. It's the heart of the cooling system on your boat. So whether it's a diesel, a petrol, an inboard or an outboard, it's most likely one of these that's holding your system together and keeping it cool. So if you were to put one of these in, does it matter which way around it goes? Today we're going to show you how it works, how to fit one, some of the common things that go wrong with them, and we've got a little trick which might well make fitting one a little bit easier. But basically, we're trying to keep your impeller looking like this, as opposed to this, or even worse, this. <laughs> this video is sponsored by marinechandlery.com, so big thanks to those for providing these impellers for this video. To kick things off, number one, we're going to tell you how to fit one of these impellers to an inboard diesel engine on a sailing boat. But regardless of it's an inboard diesel, an inboard petrol, or whatever, it's a Volvo, a Yanma, it doesn't really matter, it's all the same theory. So we'll show you how to do that at the end with the tips and tricks included, but we're gonna just move on to actually how it works and, and what matters here. So basically, this is a disaster, and this is a super disaster. Well, why do these things happen? Okay, so the basics of these pumps, Let's start with one that looks like a pump list for a start, or a vane. It's a vane pump. That is actually what it is. We call them impellers, that's what they are. But the pump system is a vane pump. Now a vane pump like this runs on vacuum. It doesn't run on pressure. So many people will fit these things, pull them in and out, in and out, and just keep using them because they look all right. And eventually we get little cracks, usually running down here. Now these little cracks and the likes don't look like a problem, so we fit them and start again and keep running them. But then what happens is, one day it just doesn't work, and why? And then the next thing is, it literally goes from, let's be fair, it goes from tiny little cracks to this. And that's your issue. So, basically, these run on vacuum, so they spin around inside a casting. And inside this casting there's a flat edge. The flat edge squashes two veins together. And what happens is, where this is spread apart, we get vacuum. And here, we get pressure. So this vacuum can quite happily sustain running around with a few cracks in it when we're dealing with a viscous substance such as water. But if we take that out, go, oh, there's a couple of cracks in, used to work, put it back in again. Now we're not dealing with water because we've emptied the system, we're dealing with air. Now, priming with air with cracks, not so easy. And then this runs dry, it overheats, it becomes this. And then straight after that, it becomes this. So. We really need to make sure we maintain these things. And the first thing we look at is any cracks, no good. Don't use it, get rid of it. In theory, it's a kind of golden rule that every time you service your engine, every year, you change this. I would go by that because the truth of it is, even though it's a faff and it seems like an expense, it's a really simple procedure, which you'll see later. But you really don't want all these bits of rubber coming off because where have they gone? Straight into your heat exchanger. And when they're straight in your heat exchanger, I really don't fancy pulling them out. And I'd like my heat exchanger to be able to keep my engine cool. Now, rather than talking about it, let's just get straight onto a boat, get it sorted out, and we'll show you how to fit one. First thing we're gonna do is find the actual pump. Now, it's probably somewhat circular. On this engine, it's right here. They're usually on the front of the engine face with all the pulleys and belts. And it's probably the only thing that's got pipe going in and then directly opposite it out. So, and it's usually got this sort of six nuts and bolts around it. So that's the impeller housing on this boat. And we've got the tools laid down below. There are proper tools you could get, and maybe we should be using them today, but I've done this a few times over the years, so I'm quite happy with this. Um, basically, one thing we have to be careful of with this setup is that the pump housing is made of bronze. It's really, really soft. So don't ever be tempted to lever it and wedge it with screwdrivers because it will damage the inside and that's going to wear your impellers out super quick. So I'm using a socket here, which looks about that size. I'm using that so I don't damage the flats on the edge. So I'll get it moving with this. Just a couple of, there we go. And before we go any further, get a rag around it, because you can see it's already started to drip. We're not going to capture it at all. I'm not too stressed. We're going to be cleaning the bilge anyway. We do that every year. And now we just proceed to pull these out. Okay. Now I should mention at this point, if you're not sure where your boat 
pump is in relation to the water level, be sure to have turned your seacock off, which we have because this is below sea level. Okay, now rather than prise it off, I'm just going to use the rubber end of the screwdriver, give it a tap. That was a, a waste of time. Well, there was more water in there than I expected. Never mind. So straight away we can see here, this is the flat edge that crushes the impeller. Now I'm going to try and pull this out. So my favourite tool for the job is this fella. But we've got to be careful as we wiggle it, we don't damage the bronze either side. So put that on, get a nice grip. Now I'm not rocking it so it touches the either side of the uh, casting, just a gentle wobble. And that's her. So the first thing I'm going to do now is just check the impeller over and just see if there's any score marks on the ribs here, or the veins as they're called. If you've got any marks on these, it's probably a direct mirror image of damage inside of here. So I'm also now having a feel around, see if I can find any rough edges and damage. If they are, we need to address that and try and just carefully remove them if there is, has been anything damaging it. That's all spot on. The faceplate, this one's got a gasket on it, which is like a paper gasket. So the paper gasket we need to remove. So some of the paper is hard to get off the back of this, and I've got most of it off. But what I don't want to do is gouge it with a screwdriver. So I've got a little bit of 500 grit sandpaper down here, and I'm going to put that on a really flat surface, and then just gently rub away. And that means that any undulations or anything that are in this, I'll be taking out, but I'll be making it flat because it's on a flat surface. So straight away, we can see that's made a big difference. Now, you don't want to go to town with that. Don't go mad. Just a little bit. These things will last forever if you look after them. All right, she's good to go. Okay, I guess now we've got to think about the new impeller. This is your top tip. Now, we've also got one of these to worry about. What's this? This, once you've attached this and fitted this into the pump, this goes on the end and it helps in the future if there was a problem. It helps to prevent end float on the system and it helps to prevent water running off elsewhere. So really important if your system does need one of these, that you fit that. Sometimes they don't come with that. This one, for example, doesn't need that. This one came with these seals, and that's the ones you should fit. Try not to use any sealant gasket or anything like on this, because if that gets squished into the chamber, you could have problems. Like I say, don't reuse your O-rings. And if you do have to reuse your O-rings, give them a stretch, look all over for some cracks and any signs of deterioration. You don't want to lose pressure to your water system through those seals. Now, for ease of me faffing with a, an impeller, I'm going to show you the trick on this small fella here. Now, as I mentioned before, these have to go into an area which is smaller than the actual impeller themselves. So, what we do is take a cable tie, wrap it round, and let's get it going. There we go. And that's it. That's your trip. Now it fits in super easy, and as we advance this into the, so we're advancing this into the casting, we just push it in and the cable tie just comes off. And that's it. On the bigger ones, obviously you might want to use bigger cable ties. I wouldn't use skinny ones because you might damage the actual ribs. So nice big ones, and maybe use two or three. And as you advance it in, let's say an inch, cut one off, keep repeating it. Make sure it's nicely lubed up with some KY jelly or ideally, the lubricant that comes in the packet with them. Okay, so next up, the pump. We're using a genuine Volvo pump. We always do. I'm not going to tell you, use genuine, use whatever you want. Inside the pump, we've got two gaskets. We're only going to need one. The easiest way to figure out which gasket we want is to put it against the original thing. And that one looks good. That one looks better. That's our gasket. Okay, we've got the impeller. I'll just check this against the original one before it goes in to make sure it's a, of similar size. She's good as gold. She's got the same keyway. 
So all in all, this one should go on. Okay, so we've got the plate and we've got the 500 grit paper. I'm just going to finish off the dressing of the plate because I had to use a, a screwdriver gently to prise off the paper gasket. And any tiny scratches in there, I don't really want. So I'm just going to use the flat edge of this again and just slowly work at it with a bit of 500 grit. And then she's looking beautiful. We'll make sure we don't get any stuff left inside. The only other thing we've got is Volvo Supply some uh, it's a glycerin. And that's what we use for lubricants. So if you don't have glycerin, like I say, you can use KY. This is better. So what I like to do with it is to put some inside the housing. So start off by lubing up the entire housing. I do the spindle as well because it just makes it easier to push on. As I said before, try not to use any gasket sealant on the gaskets, but the glycerin is absolutely fine. And it actually helps the paper swell up a little bit so you get a bit of a tighter seal. Right, so let's get the cable tight wrapped around here before we lubricate the thing up. Right around the middle. Give it a twist as we go. Okay. Whoa there, she's wanting to come off already. Now I like to lube this up whether you do or not, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> what we've got to make sure is that it, there's no chance of this running dry. They really don't like to run dry. That's that. Simple as that. Put this fella on. So now we just spin the um, screws up they touch and then once they start to touch then we can slowly start to tighten them down the thing to be really careful of here is that this is a bronze casting and bronze castings usually for example this one has um stainless steel screws the screws are much tougher than the casting so if we were to over tighten it the first thing to break will be the casting and we'll strip the threads out of it so i just take the screwdriver up and just a tiny little nip it doesn't need much all the way around and then I'll come back with the socket where I'm not going to destroy the heads and just give it a tiny little nip. If we go much more, it's really easy to damage the, the casting. And what we look for now, just make sure it's the same all the way around, is to make sure that the edges are sealed all the way around. So by making sure that they're sealed, that's good. Now when we fire her up, we will check, we'll dry all of this off with some paper towels and we will make sure that we've got no moisture on here so we can see for any leaks. Well that's it, pretty simple job. If you were to put one of these in, does it matter which way around it goes? I mean, if you put it in and it came out the engine and it was rotating this way, let's say, but you put it in that way around, I've heard it many times where people say, oh gosh, no, you can't, it's got to be the right way around. But the reality of a vein pump is, it can go one way, or it can go the other way, and it can flip backwards and forwards. The truth of it is, vein pumps run backwards and forwards the same. It doesn't matter which way you fit it. So if you put one in backwards, it really doesn't matter. And just to sort of strengthen that point, as your engine is spinning, it spins like so, and it spins it this way. It's many times an engine, when it stops, the combustion cycle finishes, and sometimes they even clock backwards a couple of degrees. And this is what happens. It just clocks backwards. So sometimes you pull it out, and it's actually the opposite way around than what you saw last time. So that's what's going on there. But basically, it really doesn't matter which way you put it in.
I hope this video has been really good for you. I hope you've found something new in it for you and maybe it's helped you do your first impeller change. I don't know. But would really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you wouldn't mind. It keeps the channel rocking along nicely and makes all the difference to our enthusiasm levels as well. Anyhow, we'll see you next week.